Well, uh, we come on to uh, the segment of the uh, the show that we like to call So Bad It's Good. This is a, a section where we talk about uh, and share some uh, poetry that is funny, not always for the right reasons. Um, and um, I was kind of um, looking through some old anthologies. There's a great anthology called The Stuffed Owl. I don't know if you've come across this. No. They, um, uh, it was uh, put together in 1930 as a kind of uh, almost an anti-anthology, you know, an anthology deliberate of um, poets, good poets on an off day. And... <laughs> Poets who were never that good, you know, or poets who were so bad that they're actually quite I enjoyable to read, such as uh, William Topaz McGonagall is probably the most mm -hmm. famous mm -hmm. example, um, who uh, supposedly he, he walked um, uh, something like 60 miles across the highlands in the pouring rain to visit Queen Victoria to go and read his poetry to her when she was at Balmoral, only to be refused entry when he got to the gate and had to walk all the way back. Uh, so he was nothing if not uh, persistent. I, I thought, well, where should I start in looking at um, uh, kind of uh, bad poetry, examples of, uh, of, of bad verse? And um, I started to look at uh, epitaphs, actually, because uh, there, are, there are some really kind of, some of them... Um, unintentionally bad but some of them intentionally uh, comical and my favorite this is uh, one that gets widely uh, anthologized is um this one for um uh, a man called supposedly called john bunn this is a, a genuine epitaph here lies john bunn he was killed by a gun his name was not bunn but wood but wood would not rhyme with gun but bun would so uh, it doesn't get better than that. Um, uh, I was thinking more more widely about epitaphs, in fact, because of course they are a chance for um, uh, for poets to uh, create their own kind of uh, uh, immortal line of poetry. You know, so, uh, Keats comes to mind. A kind of anti epitaph. Here lies one whose name was written water, uh, kind of predicting Ooh. that his his reputation wouldn't last. Um, Emily Dickinson, um, she composed them, it's just two words, called back, which is nice yes. and succinct. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I was thinking about um, uh, other epitaphs, and uh, not, not necessarily for the poet themselves, and Samuel Johnson, the great 18th century man of letters, supposedly when he was three years old, trod on a duckling and killed it. And he composed an epitaph which ran... Here lies good master Duck, whom Samuel Johnson trod on. So they were composing poetry when he was three years old, it's apparently. It's standing, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> precocious. Yes. <laughs> a sign of things to come, the great, uh, the great poet he would become. So I wondered, uh, you know, what's your experience of uh, verse that is so bad that it's actually quite, quite funny? Yeah. I, I find this section quite difficult because I read mostly uh, poets who are still alive. Uh, yeah. uh, including my students mm. and it feels a bit mean you know, to yes. isolate individuals who are still alive so um, in, in extreme cases what I've done is killed them in order to be able to <laughs> criticise their poetry in the way that I would like but um, I have one here if we want to, if, do you want an excerpt from something that I oh, this is a... not a living, this is the Canadian poet James McIntyre, I don't know if you've come across McIntyre no, no. self-taught poet which is a dangerous beast and um, McIntyre wanted to um, promote the amount of cheese that Canada could make and export. Right. I won't read you the whole of this dairy ode, but there is a, <laughs> there is a spring feel to it. So yes, Dairy Ode by James McIntyre. Our muse it doth refuse to sing of cheese made early in the spring. When cows give milk from spring fodder, you cannot make a good cheddar. <laughs> the quality is often vile of cheese that is made in April. Therefore, we think that for that reason you should make later in the season. Cheese making you should delay until about the 1st of May. Then cows do feed on grassy field and rich mil milk they abundant yield. <laughs> <laughs> no laughing. <laughs> Fourth stanza. Ontario cannot compete with the Northwest in raising wheat. For cheaper there it can grow, so price in future may be low. Though this a hardship it may seem, rejoice that you have got the cream in this land of milk and honey, where dairy farmers do make money. 
I'll, I'll leave the rest to your imagination. Um, <laughs> do make money. Just for, forcing the word do in there just to, just to make the line <laughs> scan. It's a good tactic. <laughs> Absolutely. The, and the man who could rhyme mutter with butter in the same stanza as query and dairy. Oh, is, is a man to be you know admired? I think. Yes. Uh, well, I've read a lot of cheesy poetry, but I think that uh, <laughs> I was going to say that takes the biscuit to continue. Oh. But, but um, inadvertently, uh, uh, but um, yeah, I like this quotation from Osbert Sitwell, who knew a thing or two about bad poetry. Uh, he said, uh, "Poetry is like fish. If it's fresh, it's good. If it's stale, it's bad. And if you're not certain, try it on the cat." So there you are. Advice <laughs> yeah, to, to budding poets out there. Um, yes. Read aloud to a critical friend, and if that critical friend is a cat, yes. so much the better. Yes. Cat poems, there's an idea for a future oh, show. Yes, yes. 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 S- send us your suggestions for cat poems. What's yes. the best? Uh, My cat, Jeffrey. Yes, of course. Yeah, Kit and, Smart. And one yeah. of the poets I work on wrote a, a, an anthology concerning cats. Oh, really? Full of cat poetry. Oh, wow. We'll bring that in. Yes. <laughs> Of course, T.S. Eliot, going back to him, the uh, Old Possum's Book of Practical yeah. Cats, which gave us the uh, Lloyd Webber musical. I, I, I should have brought in a list of T.S. Eliot's cat names, because he comes with cats all sorts of... Like, like Mark Twain, yeah. you know, these kind of uh, rather uh, rather adventurous names. Save it for the cat yeah. show. Yes, probably. yeah, we don't, we don't want to... Uh, yeah, uh, no, no, let's, um, let's look at that somewhere further down the feline. <laughs> And on that note, send in your suggestions for poems to uh, Elborough English. That's uh, at Elborough English on Twitter. 